Christina, last year we also spoke after the CFS annual meeting in Rome. And at that time, the principles for responsible agriculture investment had just been zero drafted. Uh, this year we have an agreement on them. What makes this agreement different from the previous international agreements on agriculture investment? And where do you see the biggest potential for change? When you look at the content, for the first time we address not only one sector or one type of investment, we address the whole, from the production to the consumption, the whole value chain. And in addition, um, it's not only about one specific stakeholder, also there we have the more holistic approach. We address all stakeholders. So from small scale producers to governments to private sector, but also uh, international organization. So we cover all what is related to investments. For the first time, we got all the stakeholders together in Rome to negotiate these principles. And when we go back and look again what the principles um, are addressing, we have food security as the main objective, so all the investments should contribute to food security and nutrition. But on the other side, it's also important that not only we want to have responsible investment, but we want to have more investment. So the principles should also try to promote the much needed investments. We have principles more focusing on the investment itself, mm -hmm. but also principles related to governance, grievance mechanisms, uh, and accountability. For that potential change to happen, what was the most important step during that last year to make that happen? The most difficult and most important point was to find a middle way, which we then tried to have in the first draft. And the first draft was then negotiated here in Rome during two weeks, again, including all the stakeholders. And the most difficult part was to find the consensus. Where was that consensus? In what point? Where, where was the disagreement where you found the consent? We negotiated the whole document. We started with 12 pages. Now it's a little bit longer. And uh, you need to discuss sentence by sentence, comma by <laughs> comma. So uh, the consensus is to set the whole document. So are you saying there was not a contentious issue, it was all about the grammar? That can't be. No, I mean, <laughs> but uh, it ends with the grammar. So two weeks with uh, 100 to 150 participants finding agreement on each word, on each uh, notion, a little bit more of this, a little bit less of this, or this, uh, we want to reflect it in that way. So it's the whole document is a content where participants in this negotiation finally could live with it. And on the other side, it's not only important to have a content, but at the end, we need to work now with this document. So it should be concise, it should be understandable, and uh, first and foremost, implementable. I want to come to uh, the consent part uh, just now again. What I learned was that about two weeks before you guys met in Rome, the NGOs had sent a letter where they expressed quite some disagreement with the process. And uh, what kind of impact did that have on, on, on the meeting? When we closed the negotiation, um, in August there was one sentence on the free prior informed consent of indigenous people where we couldn't find the consent. And the NGOs before the CFS plenary started sent a letter um, in order that this issue can be resolved. And finally the issue was resolved but I don't know if the letter, what, what was the influence of, of this letter. So you're saying it didn't have a real impact on the overall process? At that moment, I don't think. I mean, what we needed to do from August 
until mid of October is to find a solution on that sentence. And that was found. There, mm -hmm. might, there might be an impact of this letter or not. I mean, it's difficult to say. I was always optimistic that we will find a solution. And finally, the text, as we have had it in August, it was in the UN terminology in, in brackets. So the only thing, or what I could do then two weeks or ten days ago, was to remove the brackets. And there was the text, there was a consensus on that sentence. Okay, now the, the principles are on paper now. So what are the next steps now? I'm thinking of the implementation strategy. I'm sure you sketched out something in terms of awareness raising and getting the commitment of the key stakeholders and so forth. So the next step now, the talk of this open and working group working on the principles is over now and the next step of the implementation starts. But with that, it's also the end of the responsibility of the CFS, or as, as main responsibilities, the CFS will still have some responsibilities in order on, on monitoring and, and other issues. And what we plan from CFS is to organize a kickoff event um, early 2015 to bring the stakeholders together again in order to discuss strategies for awareness raising and um, other issues for, for implementation. Two years ago, the CFS had endorsed the voluntary guidelines. How do they complement with the agriculture investment principles now? The voluntary guidelines, they focus on the on land tenure and also address the investments or investment in land. Um, the right principles, they also address land tenure with the reference on the monetary guidelines, but they uh, address all other issues related to investments. So they, they complement each other perfectly. We're here with the Global Donor Platform. Obviously, we want to send out a message what can donors do to support that implementation process sufficiently, ideally. And uh, maybe you can go into that a little bit, what they can do beyond the, the ordinary, obviously, having just a workshop or putting money aside. What, what do you think? Where can they get involved? I think it's important from the owner's side that they also start to raise awareness. On one side, on the other side, when you look at the principles and the roles and responsibilities of each stakeholder, you find a section on, on donors. So donors have a role in order to apply the principles when they are dealing with investments. Thank you very much. Thank